oh, actually, uh, no, I forgot. Um, so we still actually can't get an output properly. Um, because you see, basically, each time this flashes, it's going to give an output, but it's only for a very short amount of time. Um, so we need to have like some temporary memory that's going to store our output. So let's quickly build that temporary, temporary memory. Temporary memory. Temp that's, a, that's a nice uh, word to practice saying, <laughs> temporary memory. Actually, you don't need this. Actually, we do. No, we don't. We, we don't need this to explain it. It's quite simple, actually. So, again, you're going to grab our extra memory. Because extra memory is the best for time sen for timing sensitive applications. And each time a pulse comes through, we are going to be basically XORing time memory with the current input. So to check if the time memory should flip. If yes, we could put that into an AND gate. And it's only going to flip if you have if you actually request it to do so. And if it should flip, it's going to go. It's it is going to flip. So if both the extra gate says that the memory and the input are different, and the AND gate says, or the uh, the input the other input to the AND gate says that yes, it's time to write memory. In that case, it will be flipping the extra memory around. Then we just have a nice output over there. So. Copy over this eight times. I I wallet it wrong. There, there's no reason that this is going to be a problem logically, but I'm I'm so disappointed and I'm gonna <laughs> gonna redo it now. I wanted it wrong again. Only because I'm recording. OBS, stop messing with my brain. This is all OBS's fault. Only because I'm recording. Everything is OBS's fault. Good, that's 8 bits. Uh, so now we're going to hook this up to our own memory that we are making right now, which is over here. <laughs> yes, this world is becoming a mess with all kinds of contraptions and things. Um, so in this case, we're actually going to be uh, writing to it continuously because there's no reason not to. But what we do want to uh, have is a way for the output to tell that there's that the uh, newly entered address uh, has actually been written to, uh, has actually been loaded correctly. So there's a bunch of ways to do this, um, but I am actually going to be uh, doing it the uh, in a different way. I'm just going to make sure that the other device can ask. Right, so give me a give me just a, a quick uh, pulse or something whenever the newly the, the this address has been loaded. So um, basically, what we do is is a, is the output device and say like, okay, give me a pulse and you can guarantee that in the output memory the correct data is being stored. And basically, we're gonna have the same thing as this over here. Um, before we do that, we actually want to need to tune a bunch of things. Um, because you see, um, because of small timing differences, this here will need to be activated, or these AND gates need to be uh, activated slightly later than this usually gets activated. So we need to put a timer. Um, between uh, this gate here and all these AND gates. And the best way to measure this is with, is with trial and error. Because sure, you can do the calculations, but you're going to make mistakes anyway. Like, like that one. 
Oh boy, now that thing is flashing. I need to put this on the lift again. So connect the timers to all these uh, ant gates. And then we also need to connect the data output or the recently written data, or basically the signal that's going into the timers, which is this OR gate. Um, so for most of this video, I've been basically just copying uh, uh, this design here because I honestly kind of forgot how, how I made it back then. Um, and I was like, oh, stupid me. Why, why do I like make this loop go up over here? That's like unlogical. Um, turns out it's way easier because there's uh, this OR gate, which, you need to, which we are going to be needing to access now, and this uh, AND gate, and both on the tops, so they're easier to access. Um, on the design that we build now, this is all flipped. Uh, so, so you can flip it now if you want. You can also not do it. Uh, so remember, in our design, all these important gates are on the bottom, <laughs> which, uh, which is a shame. But I'm just going to go with it, because I also need to like re-record everything. <laughs> I can, of course, also just edit everything to have the screen be upside down, and that would just be plain confusing. So, we, and so we're connecting these lower OR gates, which are the inputs to the actual data storage timers. And we're going to be connecting that OR gate to the uh, to this extra gate in our new module. So now, theoretically, if I'm going to be putting some data in address zero, right? So I'm just going to put this one in address zero. Now go to address one. Let's put uh, that byte, uh, that bit's turned on over there. Then go to address uh, two and turn that byte on over there. Then go to address three and turn that byte on over there. Is this even hooked up? Hmm. Like, uh, I actually, again, I, I forgot quite a bunch of things about this. So if here it's set to three ticks. Um, and that works. Wait. <laughs> Weird. Now we can just continue searching. So let's go to RS4 right now. Let's turn the fifth bit on in RS4. Oh look! Now we've actually got something. So, so, uh, f so by the fact that this first gate is turned on, it's actually reading address zero, but we've requested it to read address four. So instead, and theoretically, if I set this to address uh, zero, it might just read a boatload of nothingness. Well, I mean, the point is that we, if we're to be able to read our zero, we need to edit this timer, right? So let's set it to like uh, five ticks, for example, just as a quick test. So if you set it to five ticks, it's the second byte shows up. So that means that if you read address one, if you set it to like four ticks, maybe, it reads address zero. Good. And if you set it to address one, it's going to read address one. If you set this to address uh, four, and it's going to read the memory where the, four, where the fifth bit is turned on, which is address four, because the address are zero base index. Oh boy, this is confusing. But yeah, this, is, this works now. And 
And if I would write uh, something else in address zero, that should also appear in there. Exactly. Um, so then the only thing we need to do is need to quickly add this module that can tell the uh, user of this thing if this uh, memory is actually updated properly. So again, we are basically going to be building this all over again. Again, and on the late NAND gate. So quickly assemble the extra memory, go into the uh, inverting gate. I'm just going to make this a NOR because I can. Go to this AND gate, uh, add a, put a button on top of here. Then put the connections in here. So now I can turn this on to request a read. This will only turn on. And then if it has actually written stuff here, and this thing is actually a read is being requested, then we are going to be going through a, a one tick delay using this gate. And then we shall turn off all that memory again. Haha, I did it in time. So now, for example, I can um, select a different address, like uh, address 2, request a read here. And as soon as this here turns off, or a pulse comes through one of these two gates, I know that the correct address has been loaded. Or in, in each case, that um, the correct address ha has passed through the timer, which means that this circuit should have activated and read the correct memory. Uh, that's it. It's a timer memory in scrap mechanic. Again, you can make this as big or as small as you want. I've given you instructions on how to modify this for yourself. The, uh, if you only notice this now, that you, <laughs> and you've already built this, but I actually, these uh, blueprints, which basically have the same uh, control scheme, just with some extra coloring, which I probably didn't put in the description. Um, uh, the blueprints to the uh, uh, 256 bytes and uh, 64 byte uh, versions of that are in the description. Um, so the blueprints to that, there's a Wikipedia article to the um, word length in the uh, description, which might be useful if you want to create your own computer. Uh, there's a binary tutorial. For now, the old one, possibly in the future, a newer updated binary tutorial in the description. Uh, I'm code maker for build computers in Scrap Mechanic because you cannot, because it's fun. Uh, while you're doing that, subscribe to get some more tips and tricks on how to do stuff like this. Share it with your friends who also want to build time memory. Go watch some other videos if you think that you're interested in this kind of stuff. And uh, bye. Oh, wait, uh, of course I can use this glorious thing. I want to watch it fall over. Good. Wait, it, logo. Wait, this is my old logo. And it was actually incorrect. Um, that's a long story, but it, the, the video is over anyway. So. Why are you still here? The video is over. <laughs>